So I think Cardano is actually one of the most transparent uh, blockchains for how it all started. So it's it's well known that it started in Japan. It was done through a KYC AML uh, system. So it was all done all according to Japanese law. The Japanese government has absolutely no problem with it. We've, we we followed everything uh, to the letter. And not only did we do KYC AML, it was also uh, helped with an independent uh, branch and we had oversight on it and we had everything distributed across uh, different entities. Nobody could uh, steal user information. Like it was like actually like very, very solid. And a lot of credit goes to Charles for that, who really helped set up uh, the vision for how to do like the most compliant uh, pre-sale. And, you know, we ha- we're very transparent about the funding that went into it. In fact, if you go to cardano.org, I believe, there's like one of the tabs, it's like a pre-sale audit or something like that in transparency. And you can see exactly how much ADA is hold to uh, what kind of people at what time you can see like breakdown in like the amount they bought and their age and this kind of information, anything we could put out without uh, basically revealing too much. It's all there. It's all transparent. And then uh, even beyond that, after Cardano launched, so obviously they had a pre-sale and then they launched later on. After Cardano launch, there was actually a tour around Japan to help people redeem their coins. Okay. So certain blockchains such as EOS, right? They raise money with no real KYC ML. They just raise money. And then when it came to launching the project, they didn't even launch a blockchain and said like, okay, we raised the money. Here's the code kind of go figure it out. Right. And we, we did something completely different. We had a very legal, like follow the books kind of system with oversight and third party and, and the whole thing. And then when the blockchain actually launched, we really want to make sure everybody who participated in the ice or the presale should have access to their tokens. So they went city by city, meeting the people who who purchased and actually helping them set up day lists. And because you know, some of these people obviously are familiar with blockchain, but some of them are not so familiar with blockchain. They kind of heard about it and they thought it was a good investment opportunity. Right? Same thing with with Bitcoin. Right? Not everybody who who bought Bitcoin really fully understands. And so to make sure everybody understood. They really went through Japan and met the people and said, okay, this is day list and this is how you set up and here's how you redeem stuff. And they have like a whole a whole process for it and a whole team to help people out. So I think there's a lot of like, a, you know, bad rumors about like something like, you know, Charles is not a great person or whatever. It's like there's really strange like fictions of, of some people's imagination who have it out for Charles. Uh, but I think actually like, if you are looking to do like a pre-sale or an ICO for your own uh, blockchain, if you want to launch out in the future, I think Cardano is actually a very good model for how to do a fully compliant uh, pre-sale and how to follow up in, in a moral and, and safe manner. That was a great answer. Great answer. I learned some something new. I had no idea that they went in afterwards to different cities and helped people with data lists and um, redeeming their vouchers. And like Sebastian was saying, you can go to Cardano.org and click on Genesis Block Distribution. And you have all the stats there. All the math is there. And they even made charts and visuals so you know exactly, like Sebastian was saying, age distribution, geographical distribution, and what kind of buckets that they invested in. How much money, how many, how much Bitcoin did they put in towards the presale? So everything is there. There's no need to spread FUD. Go to the website and check it out.